Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. 
I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 118, found in your bulletin insert. Please let, it, let us read it responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die in the and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I had it on to you as of first importance what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cyphus, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. When, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so we have come to believe the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I have seen the Lord, declares Mary of Magdala, Mary, the apostle to the apostles, preaching the very first sermon on Easter morning. The tomb is empty, death is not final, he is risen, alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. alleluia. <coughs> I have seen the Lord, Mary testifies to her powerful encounter with the risen Christ, mistaken at first as the gardener. But when he speaks her name, she hears with her heart, and she turns and she sees her Lord, and the truth is revealed. The other disciples come and go. Can't we just picture them racing back and forth to the tomb, peeking in, seeing with their eyes, maybe even believing, but not quite understanding. And then they go home, John's Gospel tells us. Well, the good news of Jesus' resurrection is that it speaks hope and promise to all of our Easter story characters, all of us today, meeting us wherever we are on this Resurrection Sunday morning. Perhaps quick to believe or sure in our faith, maybe a bit uncertain or doubting, or fear fearful to trust that deep longing of our hearts. Maybe even surprised by having heard the sound of Jesus' voice whispering our names, nudging, calling us into new life when all seemed lost. Where? How? We might ask. What does resurrection look like? In John's Gospel, it looks like an empty tomb, angels, confusion, and the risen Christ standing right there speaking words of holy recognition and love into the deepest of grief. It looks like Mary turning to the sound of Jesus' voice, turning away from darkness and despair and toward the light and promise and hope of the resurrected Christ who called her by name. It looks like promises fulfilled. In the risen Christ, God brings life out of death, and because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too shall be raised. That is our Easter faith. Death is not the end. Love is resurrected, and that love is greater than death itself. But what about our lives, this side of heaven? Have we seen resurrection moments in our midst? Can we catch a glimpse of God's renewing love at work in the people, the places, the experiences that we have right here and right now. Jesus knowing us, naming us, claiming us as his very own, perhaps at the tomb of our greatest disappointments or loss. The Holy Spirit transforming us and bringing new resurrection life to that which seems dead. Hope in the midst of sorrow, new life in the heart of death, Relationships healed and strengthened in the midst of a difficult diagnosis. A kindness extended when all seems lost. A stripping away of all that is really unimportant as we embrace the one thing that is. Love. Resurrection sometimes surprises us and we might not recognize it immediately, just like Mary in the garden. But I've seen it at work redeeming that which seems beyond repair, transforming that which seems ordinary into something extraordinary, causing us to say, I too have seen the Lord. Because if you think about it, we have indeed seen the Lord. Look around. We see Jesus, we see resurrection whenever we come together to hear the stories, to say the prayers, to break the bread, this very morning among all of us. We see Jesus, we see resurrection whenever we choose love over hate. We see Jesus, we see resurrection whenever we carry each other's joys and burdens 
and dare to see and serve the risen Christ in each and every person we encounter. We see resurrection when we choose to live as Easter people in a Good Friday world. It's not easy. In fact, it's extremely countercultural, but it's grounded in the deep truth of Easter, trusting that our lives are held in life and in death by a God who knows us, who loves us, who calls us by name. It's fed by hope, which often looks like a defiant, nevertheless, kind of hope that we embody in spite of everything that would tell us to be defeated. A hope that sees God on the loose in the world, healing, restoring, making all things new, one small resurrection at a time. Once we've experienced this new way of seeing, of being and living, we don't get to keep it to ourselves. We can't cling to it. And like Mary, we are commissioned to go, to share the good news, to be midwives of Easter hope. And we might just find others listening, watching, wondering, who are these people? Who is this church? Did I just see the Lord? Because if this is what God is all about, if this is what authentic community can look like in all of its beautiful human imperfections, then I want to be part of it, right? I have seen the Lord. Because actually, friends, our testimony is not that it's a Good Friday world at all. It's an Easter world, a world constantly being made new, a world that belongs to God, that God will never abandon. A world God is determined to love into transformation and wholeness for all of God's people. A world pulsing with Easter hope. May we hear the risen Lord call our names. Help us to see with Easter vision and to live and share the remarkable, abundant new life that is all around us and is for us. With Mary, can we say, I have seen the Lord. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Please stand as you're able. <clears throat> Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, Repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help, 
Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will do that. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will do that. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you in the Anglican style of prayer, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the church in the province of the West Indies. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for altar guilds, flower guilds, ushers, lectors, lay Eucharistic ministers, acolytes, and choirs. Be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all the government, all authority in the nations of the world. We pray for our President Joe and our government Glenn. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings Remembering those celebrating birthday this week, Len Leroy, Parker Sanford, Jenny Dunn, and Tracy O'Malley, and anniversaries, Len Leroy and Eileen Walsh, and Sharon Munt and Matthew Barton. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And, and praise your name forever and ever. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Karen, Larry, Allison, James, Stephanie, Karana, Kristen, Stephanie, Augustine, Brenda, Eric, Linda, Wildred, Cassidy, Bruce, and Helene. That they may be delivered from their distress. Keep to the departed eternal rest. We pray for those who have given their lives in the service of our country. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we come, come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Peace, Chris. God's peace. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Peace, Joe. Happy Easter. Peace, peace. Peace be with you, God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace, friends. God's peace. Peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace, Cindy. God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, God's peace. Peace be with you. I'm going to remember. Thank you. Peace be with you. Go get your family. Well, good morning. 
Happy, happy Easter. I love the people who write the prayers for the diocese and for the Anglican cycle, praying for all of the ministries that make Easter Sunday happen. So I think just an extra round of applause for every, all of you. So wonderful. Yeah. Just a couple of announcements to call to your attention. One, it's great to see all the kids. We had a wonderful time searching for the Easter eggs out in the field, and thanks to the youth group who uh, made that happen. But if you're interested, we're having VBS this summer. There are some flyers on the back table, so we'd love to have you come be part of that. That is in August. And our children's chapel, our Sunday school classes, are meeting every Sunday morning from 10 till about 10.30. So come again. Our nursery is open, and the children's chapel is meeting downstairs from now till the end of the program year. Um, the parish retreat is coming up to Shrinemont. There are clipboards in the back and perhaps some folks working the room after services to get you engaged and signed up to come and be with us in uh, June. A word about communion. We're going to have four communion stations uh, today. We will have one here, one here, one here, and one here. And the way we're doing communion is we will be uh, taking the bread and dipping it into the wine and serving it to you. If you'd like to receive the bread only, just put out one hand or we can communicate when you come up. But that's the flow. Um, and then we will go back to our seats and continue with our service. With all of that, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise him, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to praise, to proclaim the glory of your name. You, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for the forgiveness of many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Peter and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. My friends, this altar is not ours, it is the Lord's. So come to this altar, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed, come. 
It is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, 
in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Our worship has ended. Our service to the world begins. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, guys.